Hi, this is Steve. Thought I'd take you through a little chalk talk of a recent intermediate Can You Handle It seminar course I put together. Take a look at the course. I'm going to kind of spend some time walking you through some of the options we played with, along with uh, handling options and some of the cues people considered, and I had students work on during the seminar. So let's take a look down here at the uh, opening of the course and see what's, what we can do here. So in the beginning, basically we've got a 1 to 2 into a 270, and then uh, onside weave entrance from 4 to 5. So what most people did when they went through this course is they went from dog on, started dog on right and either let out somewhere out in here or even as far up as jump 2 handled it, as I said, dog on right, so the handler would be up here, they'd shoulder pull around, and a fair number of people rear cross four to um, get their dogs into the weaves. And that worked okay, but what we would see is a fair number of the dogs um, really had no idea that three was the next obstacle, so they go fairly long over three, um, and some even would look out here at uh, jump number, uh, the off course of jump number six, they'd get so much forward, so many forward cues. So, well, there were quite a few ways you could play with that. One of the things I had students do was not lead out as far, move with their dog so they could show deceleration into two, which helps cue the turn to three more naturally. Um, uh, another option is also then not to go as deep to two, and then have the handler come across and then front cross um, on the landing side of three to help tighten up the dog's turn into three before um, shoulder pulling around to four. Um, let's see. So let's get this line out of the way. Another option that no one really played with that I like to have people work on is to actually start dog on left rear cross the takeoff of two and then push forward to support three and we we're actually seeing that a fair number of the dogs read that beautifully gave a nice turn and then the handler could choose either of the other options to either do the front cross which I liked a lot and was excellent practice to a shoulder pull or as I said people would just come in and continue with the rear cross at that point Cool. So once the dog is in the weaves, um, there were a whole bunch of uh, interesting handling some folks were trying. And I think they were uh, reasonable considering the skills that the dogs had. So um, dog exits the weaves here. Um, some folks didn't notice that it was a serpentine, which it because it's not your classic serpentine, right? It's uh, People think of a serpentine, they think of three jumps, but there's no reason that you can't imagine a serp from a uh, weaves jump tunnel here. So to consequently since it is a serp it can be handled by the handler all staying on one side and keeping the dog on left so the handler just has to support the back side of six long enough and then scoop the dog into seven. The, there were, uh, there's a few challenges with that. One is a lot of handlers ended up um, and it's pretty natural to be quite close to the weaves so then this mo they would give some motion away from the weaves and we'd see the dog would come right with the handler and uh, even take the front side of uh, six there. So to fix that what I like to recommend for students is to really once the dog gets in the weaves stay parallel and eat even as far as far off the weaves as you really can so that the dog's path when they come out of the weaves you can be in a position to easily support the dog as they come over six and um, be in a position to get to seven. Really the key aspect of all that is to um, be ahead of the dog at the landing of six. So I like to really have to see the dog through the uprights of the 
jump. So if I'm the handler out here at 6, came along, I want to try to be on the landing of 6 before the dog commits to 6, right? We always want to show the dog what's next before they commit to the jump. And if at all possible, that's really where you'd want to be. The forward motion of the handler here along this vector helps support the backside and by being off from the jump, off from the weaves, it uh, helps the handler get to the landing side of the jump more easily. So um, once uh, we spent a fair amount of time playing with that, which was a lot of fun, and then from there, there were other options for handling this, of course. Um, the handler, um, if they can't get to the backside or that isn't a skill um, they're comfortable with, there's no reason the handler can't front cross and then even cross again, either through a front or a rear in here. So by handling it on this, this side, they could come through rear cross. It turned out it was a pretty long tunnel, um, so the handler had plenty of time to get out here and pick their dog up coming out of the tunnel and getting ready for uh, obstacle number eight. So um, there were more than one, there were multiple options uh, for getting the dog from six to seven. Uh, so the next thing we got to talk about was really um, how to handle eight to nine. So a few different ways. Most handlers chose to turn their dog right uh, over eight. Um, it had the similar problems like we saw back at two to three, where if the handler isn't careful with their cues, they could really get a, either a very wide turn, or in the worst case, actually get an off course. Um, the there we go. Uh, the thing I really wanted people to work on for was an appropriate use of cues on the approach. So as they come in. You want to pick the dog up, front, probably front cross, or just a straight, actually a straight shoulder pull is what I had most people do. Show some good deceleration, stop moving. As soon as the dog is uh, landed, to give a nice sharp rotation and forward motion, which is a beautiful effect of pulling the dog straight into the tunnel like that. That worked beautifully and really let people work on their... Uh, deceleration cues on the approach to eight and reconnecting with their dog so that they could um, get that nice uh, smooth turn there. Those of you um, who are a little more experienced could recognize that you certainly could use a catch -ker. Handler comes in here, uh, turns, and then uh, cues the dog with the catch -ker. You should get a nice tight turn. And the last option uh, we have here is of course turn the other turn the dog the other way over the jump is um, a good way to get a good wrap. We can turn the dog this way. It causes the dog to change leads a few times, but the handler can really treat it just like a, a regular uh, wrap. They get out here, cue the wrap, and uh, you can get a nice tight turn over eight without any uh, concerns of the dog going wide or off course as they might on the turning the dog to the right. But I, for a drill, you definitely, uh, and probably in competition, I would turn the dog right over this jump. So we're in the tunnel, and guess what? It's another serpentine. This time, um, after the good practice we had uh, coming out of the weaves, um, the handler can just pick their, uh, I really urge the handlers to get in their position to be ahead, so they can pick the dog coming up out of the tunnel and the handler can come right down this line and it's just a, a nice straight serpentine for the for the dog that worked nicely. So from there it's uh, pretty much we get the handler into position get out here for a front cross is the easiest thing to do and then pull the dog around the pinwheel dog on right. Once again uh, it was a great opportunity to work on staying connected with the dog to get a nice turn, a wrap here, um, coming into the rapid 14. And what I really wanted people to work on was not having the handler go too deep on this jump. There's no benefit for the handler to come way past jump 14 because we really want to cue the dog that we want a nice sharp uh, 
turn on here. We don't want to see the dog winging way out here and then coming back by the handler staying uh, close to 14. Um, I'm sorry, not, not going past 14. The handler can come in here, stay on the takeoff side of 14. We should then see the dog uh, come over, land tight. The handler just needs to present 15 and it's just off towards the tunnel as we move ahead. So the handler comes along, they cue this jump, and then they really need to start showing motion. Reconnect with the dog on the approach to 16, because we don't want the dog to come over 16 with a lot of extension and look directly to the off course at 18. What we really want is the dog to come over, get reconnected with the handler with a verbal, um, maybe some arm and shoulder rotation, so you can direct the dog directly into the correct side of the tunnel. From um, That was a good exercise because the dogs are really moving at speed. From there it's pretty much straight, uh, straightforward coming out. It really is a choice of uh, where to cross. The dog's path coming out of here, right, you really just got to pick them up. You've got some sort of a turn at uh, jump 19, so we had handlers uh, work, I had, we had handlers practice all the permutations, come out here, get ahead, run it, all dog on right, run it, all dog on left if you're fast enough to get around jump 19, that was a challenge, or the most likely uh, solution it was uh, some sort of a cross at uh, the takeoff of 19, either a blind, a front, or a rear cross. All worked nicely and uh, uh, gave uh, the students a nice fast exit as we came down the, the end of the course. So this was uh, a fun course to work on. I hope uh, you enjoyed my little chalk talk here and uh, thanks for watching.